Welcome to my rat's nest of a network rack. Now, just over a year ago, this thing was perfectly organized. Everything was, you know, much better. But after over a year of testing equipment, upgrading stuff and moving cables around, it ended up looking like this. The good news is that right around this time, every year, I always upgrade my rack. Uh, when I first moved into this house about two years ago, the rack was more of a floor mount style rack. And then in the second year, I took it from the ground and moved it up top. Now this is gonna be year three, so I'm gonna be doing something different as well. I just enjoy doing things like this, you know, switch it up, make it, you know, more fun again. Now this rack powers pretty much everything in the house, everything from my security cameras, my wireless access points, uh, our TVs, doorbells, phones, Everything comes out of this rack well, except for my media rack, that's a separate one. I'm gonna be rebuilding this from scratch, I guess, to fix up this old mess right here. So over here is a PoE unmanaged switch. I'm kind of testing out the features and capabilities because I currently have the U7 wireless access point, which has the support of up to 2.5 gig. But my switch right here, which is the USW uh, 24 port switch. It's a PoE switch, but all the ports here are one gig. So I'm pretty much limited to one gig on my access point, which after spending that much money on my wireless access point, I was really curious to see what life would feel like if I add 2.5. So I got this guy. I'm unable to manage the access points. I can't reload it. I can't do anything essentially. So I'm gonna be getting rid of this. I'm gonna be changing the switch and um, we're gonna be moving things around. The other decision I have to make right here is if I should move the rack from here or keep it. So I'm thinking of taking it from here and moving it right here. Now, there are two reasons why I wanna do that. First of all, I have an electrical panel right here and electrical panels are giant or huge sources of EMI and that's electromagnetic interference, but with the type of cables I have here, these are all CAT6 cables and um, they're twisted, so that is essentially designed to cancel out EMI. So EMI is not too much of a big deal here. The second reason I want to move it is, uh, see, it's all clean, blank wall, nothing else compared to here. Just too much going on here. So I think moving it from here to there will make it much cleaner. But then there's a whole lot of work that goes into doing that. And that's right there. So I'm gonna have to move this guy and move it over there as well, which, could be challenging, but luckily for me, I have a lot of cable slack to be able to make this happen. All right, first things first, we're gonna take it all apart and then I'm gonna change the color of the rack. I started by taking everything apart and lightly sanded each piece to give the paint a surface to stick to. Then wiped everything down with rubbing alcohol to remove any dust or residue. After finishing the prep, I applied four light coats of Rust-Oleum 2X in silver, letting each one dry for roughly 15 minutes before adding the next. I managed to get all four coats in on just as the weather started to cool down. And despite that, the finish came out great, smooth, consistent and almost a perfect match with the Unify gear. After the paint cured, it was time to start bringing everything together. I test fitted all the cables to make sure they could reach the new rack location. Six of the runs installed by the builders came up short, but I handled those later with a different approach. When it came to mounting, the 19-inch wide rack only lined up with the stud on one side of the wall. I didn't want to use a backing board this time like I did before. I wanted it to look cleaner while still being solid. So for the right side, I used a 5 8 inch toggle bolt rated for up to 150 pounds. With the left side anchored into a stud and the right side secured with toggles, this rack isn't going anywhere. After that, I reassembled all the pieces and started getting it ready for the new gear. And then it was time to address the cabling. Cable management is something I take seriously, so I made sure everything looked as tidy as possible. I dressed the main bundle, secured it with velcro every foot, and routed it neatly along the wall behind the HVAC and into the rack. I started at the top with a 1U patch panel. Each cable was terminated on a keystone jack using a T568B wiring standard. Ethernet cables are four twisted pairs. Each pair is responsible for transmitting and receiving data, and with PoE, some of those pairs can also deliver power to compactable devices. 
There are two wiring standards, T568A and T568B, and they both work the same as long as both ends match. I've always used the T568B across my run, so I never have to think twice. I group the cables into bundles of six. The first bundle is for my high priority run, so things like my access points and workstations. The second handles all my active security cameras, and the third covers streaming devices like Apple TVs and the TVs throughout the house. For the fourth bundle, I use the coupler instead of terminating the cable. Now this gives me more flexibility to move things around and also add miscellaneous gears like my UPS, PDUs and my energy monitors. I trimmed each cable based on its slots but always left a little bit of slack. Perfectly trimmed cables look good, look cleaner but it is a nightmare if you have to make changes a little bit later. And that decision paid off during this install. I had to reposition a couple of the jacks after the initial setup and one of the terminations ended up being bad. So I had to redo it again. On the second patch panel I placed all my inactive runs so things like my spare bedroom drops and the backup camera lines that I have to all my security cameras. And I filled all my unused ports with black as well so everything looks clean. And finally I labeled every single cable. It's one of those steps people tend to skip but your future self will thank you when it's time to troubleshoot or make an upgrade because things will be much easier to spot. To mount the accessories to the rack, I swapped out all the cage nuts for rack studs instead. Now this clips onto the rails just like the cage nut, but they make it so much easier to mount equipment all by yourself. Once clipped in, you can rest your gear onto the studs and secure it with the thumb nuts. It completely removes that struggle of holding up heavy gears with one hand while trying to line up the screws with the other. That said, I did run into some issues with this stud nut. The pain in my fingers right now actually remind me of the exact reason why I hate terminating cables but I'm glad that part is over so we can move on to the fun and exciting part which is the hardware installation. Now this one actually left a huge dent in my wallet because I kind of went a little bit crazy on this one. So guys, make sure to support the channel by liking, subscribing, you know, leave a comment, share with your friends and family as well so we can continue to produce this content. All right, back to the video. Talking about the product that actually left a dent in my wallet. I went full Unify. Let's go ahead and install the product first and then we'll come back and talk about the specs. adjusting my cable bundle one of the studs snapped and the switch dropped the switch itself isn't heavy but the cable bundle above it was strapped too low putting downward pressure on the back of the switch i should have fixed the bundle first before trying to rack the switch lessons learned even with this mishap i still prefer using rack studs for light gears the convenience is hard to beat <laughs> For patching, I used the 0.15 meter patch cables with translucent bolts to connect the patch panel to the Ether Lightning switch. I skipped the official Unify cable. They are 7 bucks each and used the thin 32 AWG wire. I went with the 26 AWG cable instead. They are thicker and more durable and cost about a buck 25 each. The only thing that really matters for the Ether Lightning effect is that the cable bolts are translucent so the LED shines through. I also skipped the Unify's DAC cable and grabbed an off-brand one from Amazon instead. My last experience with Unify's DAC wasn't great. One arrived completely dead and while troubleshooting I pulled too hard while trying to unplug it and ended up damaging one of the SFP ports on my server's 10 gig NIC. So now I only have one port left. In my previous setup, I used SFP transceivers with fiber optic cables between devices. They work perfectly fine just draw a bit more power and generate more heat. But for this short connection, a DAC made more sense. 
I went with a 0.8 foot wide cable to link the switch to the UDM Pro through the 10 gig port. For the Oritab, I decided to go with an SFP and multi-mode fiber combo. Then it was time to deal with the old wall, the one where the rack used to be, and the cable runs that ended up being too short. My service provider fiber was also short, so the fiber from the termination box couldn't reach the new rack location. Rather than forcing it, I decided to repurpose that space and turn it into a utility wall using an IKEA SCADIS pegboard. I floated the SCADIS board slightly off the wall using a backing board so I could hide the main cable bundle behind it. I also routed the shorter cable runs on the board and added extensions from there to the new rack. I connected them using a female keystone jack on one end and a male RG45 connector on the other. It's not a perfect solution. An inline coupler junction box would do cleaner, but for now, it works. Most of these runs aren't active anyways except for two. At this point, I just needed to get the network back online. The downtime was already testing everybody's patience. This setup lets me keep my service provider gear neatly mounted, like the fiber termination box, my ISP modem, and my Ratio sprinkler controller, while also giving me a storage for frequently used accessories patch cables and other small tools. With everything fully plugged in, it was finally time to power on the rack. So once I plugged it into the UPS, the entire setup came to life. The ether lightning switch was easily the highlight. All the ports lit up with this beautiful RGB colors that made the rack look alive. After taking a moment to admire it, I went through Unify's new device adoption process and added it to my existing Unify network. Next, I labeled all the ports on the Unify switch to match the numbering on my patch panel. For the most, I mirrored the same labels and for the others, I simply named them based on the device connected to them. With that done, I decided to swap out my U7 Pro for the newer U7 Pro XG. It's not a huge generational jump. The regular U7 Pro only came out late last year, but the XG version adds a 10 gig uplink, which fits better with my rack's new 10 gig switch. Both access points are tri-band Wi-Fi 7 with a 2x2 MIMO antenna design, but the XG features better thermal management and improved heat dissipation. Honestly, the U7 Pro has been one of my worst purchases of all time. I even bought a second one just to rule out the faulty unit but the exact same thing happened with the replacement. I can't even count the number of hours I've spent troubleshooting this thing, including multiple sessions with Unify support before I finally gave up. As of filming of this video, that access point is completely disabled. I tried giving it another chance hoping the new switch might help, but it still kept crashing under load. And the most frustrating part is how it crashes. It doesn't just go offline. It stays up and keeps holding on to connected devices. Now this means they don't roam to another AP. So everything just stops working until I manually disable the U7 Pro. My U6 LR has been picking up the slack for the past 9 months and with the new XG in place, I'm really hoping for a smoother, more reliable experience because at this point, the U7 Pro has just been nothing but trouble. The mounting process wasn't quite plug and play. The brackets are completely different, so I had to remove the U7 Pro's old plate before installing the XGs. If budget allowed, I would have gone with the U7 Pro XGS or the E7. Both of those use 4x4 MIMO radio, which handles more simultaneous client connections and includes a dedicated spatial analysis radio. That radio constantly scans all Wi-Fi channels to detect interference from neighboring networks or devices allowing the AP to automatically choose cleaner channels for stronger, more reliable connection. I'm keeping the U6LR because my all-in-one sensor connects to it via Bluetooth and none of the newer Unify access points include Bluetooth anymore unless you use a separate Unify multi-link. The 10 gig PoE on my Switch powers the XG without issue. The USW Pro 24 PoE HD was by far the most expensive part of this entire project coming in at around 1500 Canadian dollar. But after managing with smaller switches for so many years, I felt it was finally time to make that investment. The port layout alone makes a huge difference. It allows for much cleaner patching between the switch and my patch panels, and the spacing gives the old rack a more balanced look. One of the standout features of this switch is the ETH Lightning. 
you can assign port colors based on VLANs, link speed, or even manually. So at a glance, I can tell which devices are in the correct VLAN or running at speeds I expect. It's not something I use every day, but it's a fantastic quality of life improvement that makes diagnostics and organization much easier. Now, the biggest reason I chose this switch though is port speed and flexibility that it offers. Most switches in this class only come with two SFP Plus ports and realistically, one of those ports gets used for the uplink between the router, leaving only a single port free. On my old setup, the second SFP port on my UDM Pro connects directly to my ISP. Since my internet service provider runs at 1.5 gig, the 1 gig 1 port on the UDM Pro was already a bottleneck. Now with the Pro HD, I get a full 10 gig end-to-end -end connection between my workstation and my ORID server. My server connects through a 10 gig link and my workstation connects via a 10 gig hub. Everything in between is now 10 gig capable. In practice, I probably won't hit those speeds often since the drives themselves will become the limiting factor. But with NVMe drives acting as cache, I'm curious to see how it performs in real world use. This setup only gives me plenty of room for future expansion as more high speed and PoE powered devices get added over time. Even from a wireless perspective, the improvements were immediate. On Wi Fi 5 devices, my minimum download speeds are now around 700 meg and on Wi-Fi 6 and 7 clients, I'm seeing speeds upwards of 1.2 throughout the house. Rooming between access points is much smoother as well, devices hold their connections better and the whole house feels faster and more stable overall. And that wraps up this BRAC build. If you've made it this far, thanks for following along with the build. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check the channel out for the next phase of this OM network. Because, you know, it's only a matter of time before I change things again.